I'm Peter Block at ACC 17 in Washington, D.C., and with me is John Alexander from Duke. John is not a cardiac surgeon, though he does cardiac surgical trials, and there is an interesting new inotrope that John has talked about, uh, which may be very helpful in postoperative patients. So, John, tell me about the drug and tell me about the study to start with, and then we'll talk about the outcomes, which were a little iffy, but sort of maybe promising. So. Start with the study. Yeah, so levosimendin is actually not a new drug. It's a, a calcium sensitizing inotrope um, that's been around for a long time. It's approved in over 60 countries, but not in the United States. And it's been studied in heart failure, and uh, it's also been studied in small studies in patients undergoing cardiac surgery. So in heart failure, it was not such a great study, was it? Yeah, so they think they got the dosing wrong and gave too much up front to borderline hypotensive patients, had problems with arrhythmias and hypotension. Okay, now tell me about your study, which is a little different. Yeah, so we, we decided to study whether giving levosimendin prophylactically to high-risk patients undergoing cardiac surgery improved outcomes. So we took 880 patients with an ejection fraction of less than or equal to 35%, randomized them to 24 hours of levosimendin or placebo, started just before surgery, and followed them for clinical outcomes. And you got me right on the edge of my seat. Tell me what, what you yeah, found. Yeah, so our primary outcome was a composite of death, myocardial infarction, dialysis, or mechanical assist device use. And levosimendin had no effect on, on that. Most of the events were MI and uh, mechanical assist device use. Dialysis and death, small numbers, but trended in the right direction. MI and mechanical assist device use, no effect of levosimendin. So the study was overall neutral or negative. Sounds to me like you may have picked the wrong endpoints. Yeah, so levosimendin did improve cardiac output, measured cardiac output. It reduced low cardiac output syndrome, and it reduced secondary inotrope use. And then we had a 90-day mortality safety outcome, and there was a 3% absolute, 35% relative reduction in 90-day mortality with levosimendin that was not quite statistically significant. So there may be something there. So let me ask you, John, uh, what's the future of levosimendin in, in uh, the United States? Do you think we're going to get another study to try and figure this out? Yeah, so um, the sponsor, 10X Therapeutics, is in conversations with the FDA. There's a small chance, based on the totality of the data, the heart failure studies, levo-CTS, and some other studies, that they'll be able to get levosimendin approved based on what exists. But my guess is it'll require another study. That study could be a really simple, uh, pretty large uh, study using mortality as an endpoint. As you said, Peter, you know, one of our real challenges was what are the right endpoints to use in these cardiac surgery studies? It's such a complicated, messy place in the 24 hours after cardiac surgery. So one last question. Uh, this drug is used in Europe all over the place. Uh, is that a good thing? Um, I think it depends on your perspective. You know, we don't have uh, great clinical data that levosimendin improves hard clinical outcomes, but we don't have that for any inotrope. And levosimendin uh, looks like it's pretty safe based on our data uh, and might have this mortality benefit. That's more than we can say for the other inotropes we have available. Okay, so for all the folks out there, cardiac surgeons or cardiologists, uh, this drug may still come back to help us. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting that we've at least got some data to show that maybe something is in the works. Yep. Thank you so much, John. Thank you.